Happy Monday, guys. Good afternoon. All right, so today, Monday, March 14th, we begin week eight. This is going to be our last week for our unit two essay. So I want to spend today, like we did last semester, if you recall, I want to spend this first day after having completed the first draft to work in partners. And I want to go over a few uh, a few things that I want us to look at together, and then I'll give you the rest of today to continue working and uh, trying to improve your draft. I encourage everyone, if you want me to review your work, to please, number one, leave a comment in the document that is related to exactly what you want me to look at so I can be very specific and, and look at right exactly what you need. And uh, also just send me a, a chat, letting me know that you have some questions or you want me to review something about uh, your document. Today's Monday, so it's better to, uh, I think, ask for feedback early this week, let's say between now and maybe Wednesday, than to maybe wait until Thursday or day before the due date. So today I want to go through a couple of things. Here's a list of things that I want us to look at, and I want to start with APA. Now, the writing partners, what I would do is first open up your partner. Here are the partners for today. And it doesn't really matter if you're face-to-face -face or online. Um, find your partner and choose or open up one of your partner's uh, Word documents. All right, and I'll give you guys a minute or two to find your, your partners. Now, there are some teams with three partners, so just choose, you know, just choose another uh, one of your partners to, to take a look at. All right, so that we can benefit from receiving some feedback from our, our classmates as we uh, look at uh, our, our first draft, as we work to try to improve our first draft. So I'll give you just a, a few minutes. If you're looking at my screen, I'm sharing the, the uh, teams for today. You can find this also in Canvas. If you open up Canvas on your phones, you should be able to access this page and I'll give you a minute or so to open up the Word documents on your either computer. Hopefully you have a computer. I think it's easier if you have a laptop. Uh, those of you who are face to face. <laughs> And I'm going to open up a note so we can look at some of these points together. Wait, quick question. We're supposed to, because I got to constantly late. Yeah. We're supposed to open up our our document. Yes. What if I can't find it? You can't find it. Yes. From teams? Yes, I'm looking at teams. It should be an alphabetical, hopefully it's an alphabetical order. Uh, her first name is uh, C. Oh, that's uh, true. I think it's... Yeah, there we go. Alright, we're good. Okay, okay. Crisis in the murder. Okay. Crisis in the murder, yes. Alright. So I'm going to take, first of all, let me just ask first, are there, where do you guys want me to start? Are there, are there certain types of errors that you want me to talk about first before, because I have my own list, but not something specific to your, I mean, something that's re re related to your text, but, but in general, like, is there a certain type of error that you want me to start with? Yes. Sometimes I cannot like, remove they, I mean, they or them, it's, Sometimes I cannot do that. All right. They. Subjects. All right. So the question is sometimes it's difficult 
to avoid, let's say, subject pronouns. It could be they, it could be it. I see a lot of it's. And in general, one of a, the common, okay, I'll call it a mistake, but a common thing that we need to be concerned about is avoiding overusing All right. subject pronouns. It's a very common thing. And I'm not saying that we can never use subject pronouns, but, but certainly in writing, in formal writing, we don't want to overuse them. All right. So let me give you, uh, let me just title this. I'm sharing my screen, guys, and I'll share the link to this, these notes that I created together with you today. I'll share this in the chat when we finish. Uh, so we'll call this group feedback. Our essay. essay. All right. So our first point, do we want to number these or bullet point them? Let's just number these. So, okay. Uh, let me see if I can make this, can I make this bigger? Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. And I'm going to call this over use of subject pronouns. Okay, now an the example here, they, and so on, it, etc. All right, now, to avoid the subject pronouns, before I offer a suggestion, are there any suggestions from you all? How do you avoid, or how could you avoid, or let's say just replace a subject pronoun? What are our options? You can be specific how the person you all right. So, go ahead. so let's think about this being specific, though. In what way? Think of the language. What kind of language could we be more specific? Like, how could, what would we say? If you're talking about um, Native American adolescents, maybe it could be the, the replace that. All right. So let, let me give you one. Suggestion. You could use what's called direct repetition. Now, direct repetition. Did I spell it right? Yeah. All right. There we go. So, direct repetition. You could use direct repetition. You could use exactly the same words as the antecedent of the pronoun. Remember, a pronoun has to have an antecedent, it, it replaces something. So, they, who are they? You could use exactly the same words as whatever they are, whatever you said earlier. That's called direct repetition. You simply use the same words. So if you're talking about English language learners, you're saying English language learners learn best when they use cell phones in the class, period. Instead of using they, you could also say English language learners and use exactly the same words. Now, we don't want to overuse them. That's not always the best option every single time, but it is an option. It is one option to avoid the pronouns to use direct repetition. Another way to avoid subject pronouns is to use synonyms. So use a word that has a similar meaning to the antecedent of the pronoun. That's another way, instead of using a pronoun, instead of using it, use a synonym. And that's a very good way to, to avoid the uh, pronoun, the pronouns. And what about the, the clauses? And that's, you need actually to say um, first uh, they and they, yeah. for example, I have two adolescents who are going to use marijuana in South Africa to prove themselves they could act. Like within the sentence? Yeah. It's not so much of a problem within the sentence. All right. It's less of a problem within the sentence if the pronoun is comes later. That comes later and later on in the sentence. The problem usually is when the pronoun starts the sentence. Uh, okay. Right? It's like the first word of the sentence. Right, and this is something you can check right now with your classmates. Just, just type in, do a search, control F, and search for the pronouns they and it. Also, look for we, because we don't want any we's, or we don't want any you's. 
So just take a minute or two and look for those key pronouns. Everything should be in the third person. We don't want to overuse they. How many times do they use the pronoun they? How many times do they use the pronoun it? Where are those pronouns located? And, and you make a determination. Can you make a suggestion? Maybe use direct repetition, synonyms. And we also have what's called hypernyms and hyponyms. Hyper, hypernyms and hypo. Yes. Have you heard of these terms? Make sure my spell. It's hard to see back here. Hi, <laughs> hypo, hypo, nims. Okay, I think I got it. Hyponyms and hypernyms. Have you heard those terms before? It's, you are very general. You are very general. Okay, can you give me an example of a hypernym or a hyponym? Like if you're talking about cars, you say cars. You, you don't say a specific um, and have term. All right. Or say people or a hyper. All right, okay. So hypernyms and hypernyms. I'll give you an example. Cars, as you're mentioning, cars, you could say cars is a hypernym of Ferrari. Now, a cars is a more general category. A Ferrari is a type of car. Right? So Whenever you're writing and you're trying to find ways to avoid the pronoun they or it, you can use these word families. So maybe instead of cars, you used cars before, you can say, okay, I'm going to talk about a Jetta or a Volkswagen. Okay, and, and that's another way that you can avoid these, these pronouns. But check your partner's work, look for pronouns. How many times do they use they? How many times do they use it? And make sure if you see any examples of we, or you, or I, be very nice and kind and say, please stay in the third person. Leave a note to your, your, uh, your writing partner and ask that they stay in the third person. Those are the, I think, the main three that I would... Um, you know, three ways that I, I would try to, that you could avoid the, the overuse of the pronouns. Okay, now again, I'm not saying that you can never use them, but this uh, direct repetition, synonyms, and hypernyms and hypernyms, those are good options. Another type of error that you want to talk about, this is for everyone, those of you who are online, please jump in. If you guys have... Well, yeah. Adan has another, uh, another, uh, I, I have, like, well, let me, um, like, sometimes I, um, I, I don't want to use the, for example, the, the subject, and I am using, um, general verbs, like, for example, uh, I don't know, how to in English and I want to use when being, uh, with their friends. I mean, I want. I don't want to use uh, when they are with their. Uh, like a reduced. Uh, yeah, what about this? That's okay. Right. As long as it's clear and and, and uh, grammatically correct, yeah, yeah. what you include, you can use re reduced uh, clauses. Yes. Is it okay to use it to get all? Um, yes. Well, let me just. I'd have, I think I would have to read it, but I think generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with using um, reduced clauses. There, there are other mistakes I feel that, and that's not a mistake, but there are other things that are more serious. Uh, but yeah, reduced clauses is perfectly fine as long as it's understood within the context of the sentence. And I think that that's my only hesitation is to make sure that that it fits with the discourse yeah. with the flow of everything else. But generally speaking, reduced clauses where you're reducing, let's say you're leaving out the, the subject and just using maybe like a participial phrase, yeah. uh, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. Any other types of mistakes before I go down my list that you want us to discuss? Um, I don't know, but I... I think that I have trouble, uh, trouble uh, with the cover slides. The cover slides, 
because I I was like okay I have to separate these two sentences, but I don't want to to separate them with a uh, with a com no oh, the period uh, with the period yeah but but should I use the comma or I should the semicolon I don't know I was like. All right, so the question is like how to avoid or how to fix a comma splice, basically. And I can give you, generally speaking, I, I, I think in this class we talked about the different ways of fixing a, a comma splice. Um, so one is to separate into sentences. Separate sentences, separate into sentences, and that's just with a, a period. We could use a semicolon. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to these. Um, what else? We could use fanboys, coordinating conjunctions, and we could use subordinating, subordinating conjunctions. Any others? Am I missing any? Separate um, any sentences, semicolon, fanboys, subordinating conjunction. I think that's those are the options. Now, um, the semicolon. When would we use the semicolon? Let's say because we could replace that comma splice with the semicolon. The clause or the next clause should be like um, directly related to the first clause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very very related. Right. In our example, I like apples and I like oranges. I like apples, semicolon, I like oranges. They're very, they're two sentences, very, very much related. And that would be a case where you could use a semicolon. So that would be one reason for using it. Now be careful not to overuse in general the, the semicolon, right? Because sometimes we can Go crazy and have a lot, a uh, lot of semicolon. So it really depends also how long the sentence is, because you want to look at the whole sentence in its totality. So if the sentence itself is pretty long, then maybe it would be best to separate into separate sentences. But if they're shorter sentences, or it's you know it's, they're not that long, yeah, then maybe a semicolon would work uh, for you. Same way with fanboys, depending on the relationship of the, the two clauses, fanboys, do you want to add, say, this and this? It really depends on how long the sentence is and what you're saying. So um, that might be, this might be something that we look at more on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're not sure which option is the best, we can look at it together and I can make some suggestions based on the context, based on what you have. Um, I think if you know how to fix them, though, you're, that's part of the battle, is first recognizing that you have a comma splice, right? So instead of me detecting and you detecting yourself as you are reading your text, and then say, okay, what, how can I fix this of these four options, which would be the best based on mine, my, 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 my text? I think these are questions that, that you could ask that uh, I could help you with. It's hard to give you a, a blank. I can't say, oh, semicolon is always the best way to fix a comma splice. Well, it just depends. Um, so check your, your partner's work. Are there any examples of comma splices? Now, in, with comma splices, right, we have, let me just, Put here, comma, vice. And what are what are some of the other uses of the comma that you found in your own writing or that you find in your partner's writing? Some other comma usage uses. Writing partners text. Are they using when are they using commas? Besides the comma splice, which we don't want to use, but when should we use it? Usually when you have 
in the table class now in the canon class um, that, that actually needs an independent class that does measure issues is um, right so check in your partner's work see if you can see when they're using a comma to separate two main clauses in a compound sentence I like apples, comma, and I like oranges. That's a compound sentence. We have two main clauses. We have fanboys. And this is a, a good time to use the comma to separate those two main clauses. What's another use of the comma? Um, for example, uh, after I forgot the name of those words, like therefore, Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, transition. Yeah, transition. Transition? Words. You could say it is a type of transition. I usually call it like a sentence connector. Mm -hmm. A sentence connector, but it is, it's is—it's a type of transition. You're transitioning from one sentence to the next. It could be within one sentence, or it could be at the beginning of a, of a sentence. So when you say therefore, therefore, comma, right? So I'll just put here sentence. Connect. Take a look at your partner's work. See if they are have if they include a comma after the sentence connector. Sentence connector comes usually at the beginning of the sentence. Examples. Therefore. First. Blah, comma. Blah 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 blah. Second. Comma. Blah 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 blah. Uh, what are some other examples? Moreover. Moreover. Finally. Finally. Comma. Also. Also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could say maybe also, right? In addition. Right. Or additionally. So after the sentence connectors, check your partner's work. See if there are commas after the sentence connectors. Another use of the comma. Separate. To separate. <laughs> Separate sentences? Like what? An example? Uh, no, complex. No. Complex. Sorry, let's take complex. When do you use a comma for a complex sentence? There isn't a so um, The dependent clause goes first and then independent clause goes after. I think. Yes, yeah, so the when the dependent clause comes first, the we use a comma, and then the main clause comes afterwards. When the main clause comes first, we do not use a comma. So for example, if I say this, because I stayed up all night to study, I fell asleep in class. Complex sentence, we have a subordinating clause that comes first. So when the subordinating clause or the dependent clause comes first, we need the, the comma. Now, can I say this? Can I turn these around? Can I say, I fell asleep in class because I stayed up all night to study? Can I do that? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Without do you need a comma? No. No. So here would be like, I fell asleep in class because I stay up all night to study. No commas used when the main clause comes first. Take a look at your uh, writing partner's work. Right? And, and usually, just take a look, and if you see a comma, ask yourself, okay, when is my partner using the comma? Is my partner using it for, first of all, is it a comma splice, or is he or she using it, is it in a compound sentence? Is it after sense connector? Is it in the case of a complex sentence? Now there's one other use. I mean, there are many uses of the comma, but there's one other use that we talk about quite a bit. And everyone in our class should at least have one example of this kind of comma. And what is that? Uh, when, when you're listing um, words, five when you're listing items, 
We call this, what's, what's our official name for this? Or sometimes it's called Oxford comma. This is when you have a series. How many items do we need at least to have a series? More than two. Three. More than two or three or more, right? If we have two items, that's not a series. If we have one item, that's not a series. But if we have three, I like apples, comma, oranges, comma, and bananas, then we need our cereal comma. Now, in my example that I always get with the fruits, right, it's easy. It's, we're, we're listing words, bananas, apples, grapes, whatever. But you guys are writing sometimes clauses or phrases even. Look at your thesis statement. Take a look at your partner's work and your, the and the, your partner's thesis statement. Your partner should have three key points. Those three key points should be in a list using a comma. So take a look at the thesis and check to see if it's very clear to you what those three points are and that there is the proper use of the serial comma. The serial comma refers to that last comma just before the coordinating conjunction, just before the fanboys. In our case, probably and. Everyone's using, I think, and is going to be the most appropriate uh, conjunction for us. Okay, for the thesis, very quick fix, very quick way to check it. If you don't see it, leave a very nice constructive comment to maybe check that later to make sure that there's a comma being used. Now, there's some other uses of the comma using a restrictive, non-restrictive relative clauses and a positives, but we won't, for now, we'll stick to, to these, okay? I don't think I saw any examples of a positive. I'll list it here on the, on the, on the list if you just are curious. Positive, and I think it's two P's, is it one or two P's? It's two P's. A positive and a non-restrictive relative clause. We need to use commas in those cases. A positive, Mike, comma, a doctor, comma, went to the office. That's an, a noun phrase and a positive. We would use commas there and non-restrictive relative clauses when it provides extra information. We could use a relative clause. We would use a comma before and after in that case as well. That's really the main uses. Take a look at your partner's work and find all of the examples of the commas. Every time your partner uses a comma, ask yourself, is my partner writing a comma splice? Is my partner using this comma in a compound sentence? Is my partner using this comma after a sentence connector? Is my partner writing or using this comma in a complex sentence to separate a dependent with an independent clause? Is my writing partner writing or using a serial comma? And of course, a positive and non-restrictive. I really don't think I saw any examples of a positives. I could be wrong. I don't remember seeing any of those. And if you can't find a category, then ask your partner to just double check. Just say, could you double check this comma? Does it really need to be used? And this is what I want you guys to start doing for yourself, for your own writing, of course, and helping each other with your partner, is I want you to know why you're using a comma. I want you to know why you're using it. If you don't know why you're using it, my suggestion would be to not use it. And then over time, you'll start to see, okay, when you start, when you need to use it, right? These are the main reasons, the main ways that we use a comma. One, two, three, four, five, six different ways, mainly, that we use a comma. Sir, just a question. Yes. You, you, you just said that if the person doesn't know how to use a comma, just uh, 
with the comma, or we can. Well, I, I would suggest not to. I mean, I'm providing this list so that we kind of learn to understand these and try to use it here and, and classify here. But if you're not sure, don't use it. But the idea is to understand, OK, when you have a sentence connector, I need it, right? Uh, if I have a series, I need that serial comma. If I'm going to write in a positive, I need it. So um, sometimes we use commas when we don't need it. We overuse the comma. And that's why I'm saying, you know, as you're learning these five or six situations or context for using a comma, if it doesn't fall into one of these categories, probably you don't need it. That's my point. Like if, if it's not in a compound sentence, sentence connector, you know, serial comma positive, probably don't need it. Okay. Questions, guys, or another error that you want us to, to talk about? I don't know, maybe some people would, would use the couple numbers when, for example, at the beginning to, to denote any action. Okay, can you repeat that again? Sorry. Like copula, co copula. Ah, uh, co like linking verbs. Yeah. Right, copula verbs. All right, so check. I'd like for you to check four sentences. The thesis statement and the topic sentence. And look for the main verbs. Which verbs are they using? The most common linking verb or copula verb is the verb to be. But we have other linking verbs. What are some other linking verbs besides the verb to be? Become. Become. I see a lot of becomes. It's becoming this. This becomes something. Seems is another linking verb. So take a look at the thesis statement. Take a look at your partner's three topic sentences and just see which verbs are using. If you see a linking verb, be polite and leave a kind suggestion to revisit the verb. Maybe find a more dynamic verb, action verb, performance verb. Sometimes we call them performance verbs, action verbs, dynamic verbs. Show action. For these sentences, these are our special sentences. This is how we create our skeleton outline. Is are these building these strong sentences? So be careful with linking verbs. All right, anything else? What else? Um, take a look at the topic sentences of your partner's text. That is, the, look at the first sentence of each body paragraph. And just notice how long or short it is. How many words does it have? If it's a short sentence, now what's a short sentence? I don't know. Less than a line across. See if there are any suggestions that you can make about maybe adding clauses or phrases, adding more information to the topic sentence. Now we don't want a super long topic sentence, but if your sentence is four or five words, Five words, perhaps that's too short. Six words. See if you can suggest adding a clause or a phrase to your partner's work. These are just suggestions, right? When you're receiving feedback from your partner, right, you can decide whether to take 
their advice or not, right? Where there are no hard feelings here if you decide that what you have is better than what your partner has suggested. But we're trying to help each other to take notice of how much information we're including in those topic sentences. Our topic sentences should be more specific than the key points in our thesis statement. Take a look at your partner's thesis statement and compare that to the key points that are listed at the end of your thesis statement, at the end of their thesis statement. Can your partner be more specific in the topic sentences? If you think so, make a kind suggestion to perhaps take another look. And I'll, I'll post a question here. Can the topic sentences be more specific? So in many cases, there they can be. Perhaps they should be. Can they be more specific? How can you be more specific? Adding a clause, adding a phrase. Automatically, you're being more specific. Now we 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 can also go too far, right? But I think in most cases, our challenge is how can we write a topic sentence that's more specific than the key point in the thesis statement. You guys jump in with your questions if uh, if you want me to repeat something or if there is something that you want to see an example of an error like a run on sentence wc word choice ww wrong word if you have questions about what those codes mean this is a good time to clarify your doubts take a look at the error code list when you see a g r e e agree what does that refer to? On oh, the subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement, right? Doesn't mean that I, I agree with you, although I may. <laughs> One student asked, well, I, th I didn't do anything about that error because I thought you were just agreeing with me. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But no, this code actually means subject verb I agreement. See. Take a look at the subject. <laughs> <laughs> thought, wow, he's very agreeable. Very agreeable. It really doesn't matter if I agree with you or not. It, it's more about your thoughts, your the way that you express yourself. That's the important thing. It doesn't matter if I agree. Um, all right. Any other questions, guys? Those of you online, any anything you want me to address here? Talk about? We cannot put that on for a citation, right? Comma before the citation, um, like it, like the citations at the end of the sentence. No. No. Where's the citation? In the second line, it says. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's do this. Take a look at your partner's work and see if all of the citations occur at the end of the sentence, making sure that the period occurs after the citation. Now, there, there won't be any punctuation, there won't be any comma before the citation, like at the end of the sentence. Um, so, so double check that, check your partner's work, make sure that all of the citations are at the end of the sentence, number one. And number two, there's only one citation per sentence, like you don't have more than one. There might be some exceptions if you have more than one source at the in one citation at the end of the sentence. But um, I saw some examples where they had a sentence and they had some ideas and then a citation, some more ideas, a citation, and some more ideas and a citation within one sentence. Is that valid? Uh, I suggest not to do that. I would have one citation for for one sentence. This also forces us to provide more detail from that same source in one sentence. And a lot of times that's going to be a better way to, you're gonna have a better text if you get into the details. Okay, so check that your citations, that all citations are at the end of the sentence, being very careful that the period, the full stop is after 
the citation, not before, but after. Okay. Any other questions? I really want to take today to really address some, some errors, some types of errors for, to clarify your, your, your doubts. If we need to see more examples, I can try to provide more examples. You're gonna post this list, right? Yes, when I finish here, I will share this and post it in the chat so you can access everything that I've listed uh, here. In fact, let me add this one. Citations occur at the end of the sentence. Those of you who are online, vamos bien, vamos mal, vamos bien mal, que <laughs> bienvenidos. Todo bien? No. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So, what's next? What else should we look at? Take a look. Let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's look at the format. The formats. Single space. I think we've we did talk about formatting, right? Double space between um, all of our text. Making sure there's no extra space between paragraphs. It's very simple. Just glancing through your partner's essay. Make sure from the heading to the first paragraph that there's a double space, no more than a double space. That is two single spaces. Making sure that you have equal spacing between paragraphs, no extra space between paragraphs. Take a look at the references page. Is there a page break for the references. That is, the references should be on a separate page. So check spacing. Take a look at your your partner's text. In fact, let me see here. Um, can I open up one of you guys' uh, essays? Any volunteers? And then, okay. <clears throat> we'll pick on uh, Adan today. If you guys are looking here at uh, my screen, I'll share with you. Sometimes it's easier to see by example the spacing. Take a look at your partner's work. See if the title, how many words in our title of our of our essay should we have? From six, from six to twelve. Yeah, generally speaking, I think six to twelve words is is reasonable. And how should we format the title? In bold, yes. Middle of the page, and which words are capitalized? The main words, not the position. The main words. So take a look at your partner's work. Take a look at the title of your par partner's essay. Is it centered to the page? Is the title of the essay in bold? And is the title, do you have, do they have the uh, main words capitalized? If not, make a nice, friendly suggestion. Take a look. Notice here we have double space between the heading, the title of the essay, and the first paragraph. Notice we have double space throughout the paragraph. Notice that there is equal spacing. It's double space between paragraphs. A lot of times I see extra space between the paragraphs. So check your partner's work to see if there's extra space here. Make a suggestion. Again, equal spacing between paragraphs. Again, equal spacing between paragraphs. 
Again, equal spacing between paragraphs. Notice here, we have a page break. And then we have references. Now, the only thing I notice here, maybe, let's see if that's true. All right, just like. I think, yeah, make sure that the word, the title references appears at the top. It looks like in this example, maybe we could re, we could delete a couple of lines and bring references all the way to the top, but also double check that, that references. Yeah. And usually what I do, guys, is I just put the cursor right before the letter R of references and then control enter or insert page break. And then I know for sure that it appears at the top of the page. Okay, usually when it, this happens, maybe you put the cursor up here and you did the page break at the time, who knows. But try to have references at the top, but notice that there's good spacing between references and the first reference. The title references, we have double space. So check your partner's work, make sure there's no extra space. We have single space within each reference. Double space between each reference. Single space within each reference. Double space between each reference and no more than double space. Again, I see I see some examples of extra space between these. So this is a good example right here. There's no extra space. It's the way it should be. Now take a look at the indentation. Now I'm going to open up the ruler and really the, the best way, the only way I think uh, to do this is to turn the ro ruler on because it's almost impossible to get this right without using the ruler because there's some precision that's required. So if you, and this is a good example. So when you're doing your references, check your partner's work. Turn the uh, ruler on, make sure it's in inches. And if you notice here, it's kind of hard to see, but this slider bar actually needs to be over just a little bit to the left. I think maybe it's because of the version because I'm using the, the desktop uh, version. Uh, okay. It's, it's All right. Well, just, yeah, just double check, make sure that, that it's, uh, that it's lined up. It just looks like it's off here a bit, uh -huh. but double check that and yeah, and make sure that you have reverse indentation. The first line should be all the way to the left, all subsequent lines of the same reference with a half inch indentation. Again, it's it's a quick fix. You, a quick fix, and it's a, just a very quick observation. Right? It should take you just seconds to say uh, maybe this should you know give it another look. And that's all you really need to say in the comments. Please take a look at the spacing in your references. Okay. Now look at the text overall and make sure that the text is aligned to the left. Align to the left. What do I mean by that? If you go under home, these notice here alignment. We want to make sure after you select all of the text that it's aligned to the left. Sometimes I see this justified option where it lines up really nice and pretty on the right hand side of the page, but we actually want all of the text aligned to the left. So take a look again. If you see something and uh, if you want to make an observation, just select the first word of the text and ask them to align to the left. Jump in guys if you have questions or if you need if I need to repeat something. I have a question about the references because in some articles I can find uh, the issue number and the number page number. So what should I do here? Sometimes the issue number is not. Yeah, the issue number is optional for first of all. So if you don't find an issue number, no problem. Usually the volume number is almost yeah. in every every case uh, of the articles. 
Uh, but yeah, the option, the, the issue numbers option. Now the page numbers should be there, whether they're in with all of the rest of the information about the article, or if you just have to go into the article and look yourself to see what the first page is and what the last page is. So either way, try both to see if you can get the page numbers, uh, because that's important to list at the end of the, the reference. Okay. All right, you're welcome. Now let's look at our references. Take a look at your references from your, your writing partner. Now the first thing I'd like for you to look at is the title of the article. We need to have at least three articles, peer review journal articles. Take a look at the article, the name of the article. The name of the article is going to be this first entry right after the date. So in this case, if you're looking at the, the page here, we've got adolescent parties and substance use. Now take a look at your partner's work and see, find examples of titles and subtitles. Okay, many articles will have a title of the article and a subtitle separated by which punctuation mark? The colon, yes. That's one of the uses of the colon, is to separate a title with a subtitle. Now, the question I have for you all is, what are the capitalization rules for including in our references according to APA when it comes to the title of the article. How should we capitalize our text? Well, if it's a proper name, you should capitalize it. Yes, certainly. If it's, a, if it's a proper noun, we need to capitalize it. So English, the word English will always be capitalized. The word Spanish will always be capitalized. The word Aguascalientes will always be capitalized. But other than that, Beyond that, how should we capitalize the title, the name of the article? Well, maybe for, uh, I have a question about after the column, because that, that's why I didn't, uh, didn't capitalize the preposition A, because I didn't remember it should be the last person. All right. Uh, those of you who are online, what do you think? What are the rules for capitalizing the name of the article or the title of the article? Well, maybe also after uh, question marks or exclamation marks, we should capitalize. After? If there's no comma, maybe. Okay. Uh, after the after the the, the cap yeah, usually you 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 may see that between question marks and I don't know don't do it in the you have exclamation mark and then maybe you should start we should start capitalizing okay all right so we want to make sure we capitalize at the beginning of the title so the first word first letter of the first word should be capitalized. Only. Take a look at your partner's work. Is the first word, first letter, only? Is that uh, is that capitalized? The rest of the words should all be in lowercase. Now, in the case of a subtitle, like we have here in this example, a situational approach to peer influence, we also want to make sure we capitalize the first word of the subtitle. So here are the rules. This, these are the rules for capitalizing the title of the article. Only capitalize the first letter. I know when you look at the article, maybe the article itself, the main words are capitalized. It doesn't matter. We're, this is how we should list it out in our references according to APA. The first word only is capitalized. If you have a subtitle, of course, capitalize the first word of the subtitle. Take a look at your partner's work. It's very 
Very quick fix, very quick observation. We'll be able to distinguish if your partner has capitalized correctly. Again, proper nouns are always capitalized. So it could be the case where you're requesting your partner to capitalize English when maybe it was in lowercase. That's possible. Now, what comes after the title of the of the article? In our references, what comes after? The name, the name of the journal. Now we have rules for the name of the journal. What are the rules for formatting when it comes to the name of the journal? It should be italicized. Take a look at your partner's work. Is the name of the journal italicized? What else? Every main word should start with that's correct. Each of the main words of the name of the journal should be capitalized. These are different rules, right, than the, the name of the article. This is what makes APA difficult. All of these little rules. They're not difficult. I mean, in a sense of, you know, it's just a lot of detail, a lot of small things. So take a look at the name of the journal. Should be italicized. Main words are capitalized. So in this case, journals capitalized, criminal is capitalized, and justice is capitalized. What else do we italicize? Volume number. The volume number. So the journal, the name of the journal, and the volume number are both italicized. Take a look at your partner's work. This is the question. Should yes. it be a period or a comma after the, the journal? After the journal, a comma. Okay. Yes. Uh, we should have a, a period, talking about punctuation, we should have a period after the title of the article. We should have a comma after the name of the journal, which is italicized, main words are capitalized. The volume number, which is also italicized. And then if you do have an issue number, which is optional, the issue number is not italicized. The issue number is not italicized, should be in parentheses, and it should be right up and next to the volume. If you're looking at this example here, we have 41, so then still needs to italicize the number 41. Oh, yeah, exactly. But then notice there's no space between the number 41 and the issue number three, and that's correct. It should be right up against each other, followed by a comma, space, and then the first page of the article and the last to the last page of the article, just like the example that we have here, 162, to 171. Notice there's no P for page. Notice there's no VOL like volume. There's no abbreviation. We don't have any abbreviations. It's just the number. Take a look at your partner's work. See if there are, you can make any suggestions. And you're still missing uh, right the capital capitalizing criminal and justice, right? Now then. All right. See. <laughs> if you have a DOI, just make sure that it's HTTP S usually or HTTP. Good question. Yes. Um, it says it has to be alphabetical order. Is it alphabetical order by the name of the name of the article or name of the author? The author. Okay. Since well, it's name of the author when the author's names are coming first, which in most of the cases that is the case. There are times where there are no authors, so in those cases, you might start with the title of the, either the page or the article, and, and then you would alphabetize based on, on that. So it's whatever comes first in each reference, you alphabetize by that. Yes, in most cases, it's the authors, but there could be cases where there's a title, you know, that starts the reference, but yeah. And you know, 
Uh, sometimes there are cases where, for example, uh, I have here uh, a loop and which are, and maybe which are may come first, but that's the way it appears in the However, it appears, and this is, okay, this is another important observation. The order in which you list the authors in your references, like for example, uh, the, sec the second uh, example here, the second reference that we have here on our screen, uh, Manu, Douglas, and Ayanor. That order should be the order that it appears on the article. This is very important because when you do research you and you write an article, the, the head author, whoever's listed first, is the main author. That is, supposedly that author contributed more than anyone who comes after. So authors, researchers will be very deliberate, very careful of the order in which they, they present or list their names for the, uh, for the article. Notice it's not alphabetical, right? M you know, comes after A in this case. So it's not alphabetical within the reference. We do alphabetize as we list the references, but not within. So yes, just you respect the same order as it appears in the article and uh, you should be fine. So here we have a good example. Now this first example, take a look at how the authors are listed, the year, parentheses, period, capitalization, punctuation, which text is italicized, spacing. This is what makes APA difficult, my friends. So I think just looking at an example and then comparing what you have or what your partner has is the easiest way. This is what I do when I'm not sure. I just find an example that I know is correct and then try to do the same. Questions, guys, online? Those of you who are on, on, online in the session, any doubts so far with APA? No, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, sorry. No, no. Uh, OK. <laughs> All right, so I know this sounds a little tedious, right? But if we do this, I think once we'll really get a handle on it and you know, you'll know you be able to take this going forward uh, when you are creating uh, essays in the future here. And by the way, what we're talking about in this class, anytime you're asked to write an academic essay and they, they use APA, so just follow APA, Please do whatever we're doing now, right? This is not something, this is, these aren't my rules. This is not special for this class only. This is for any academic essay that you're asked to, to write, right? Getting all these details right, I think will help you in other classes. All right. Um, now, these, ex this example that I just shared with you are articles. Uh, unfortunately, the, you know, all the other types of references, there are other rules that apply if it's a book. And so we're not going to go into all of the different types. Uh, but since all of us should have at least three peer reviewed journal articles, uh, this will take care of those types of references. If anyone wants to see a, an example of a book and you don't mind me sharing it, let me know and I'll, I will I can explain how to do a book reference according to APA. All right, next thing I would like for you to check your partner uh, partner's uh, document. Please look for any extraneous information. Now, what do I mean by extraneous information? Any notes, problem, statements, skeleton outline. Now, I know that we are we're using this document at the beginning to include all these notes, but as we are getting closer to now finalizing our essay, I'm going to ask very kindly, please, to remove all extraneous information. I know you're still working with comments and making changes, but please, by Friday, when we finish our final draft, please remove all comments, 
Remove your problem statement, indirect question, thesis statement, skeleton outline, any notes to yourself, any highlights, please, please remove highlights. Highlights, please remove highlights. I think it's great that you're doing all these things in preparation and as you are writing your essay, that's, those are great strategies. But for the final draft, we want to have a clean final draft, no extra information, no comments. So just, just as a reminder to your partner, this is probably applicable to everyone. Nice comment. Hey, don't forget to remove all of this extra information, please, please. Take a look at the title page. Is there a title? Name of the, the person, the writer, your classmates. You can add the dates. Underneath the author notes, please indicate if it's a problem only essay or just problem essay is fine, or a problem solution essay. See if your partner has indicated that. See if your partner has indicated a target audience. To whom are you writing the letter, the essay? Who would benefit the most having read your essay? Try to be specific. See if your partner has included that information. Ah, another thing. Again, jump in, guys, if you have questions or want me to address something specific. Take a look at the citations. We talked earlier today about making sure the citations occurred at the end of the sentence. Now let's look within and inside each citation. What do we include in our citations? The last name of the authors. Year. And the year. And the year. Since all of us are paraphrasing, that's another thing to check. Since we are all paraphrasing our citations, the page number is not required. It's optional. So I'm not really looking for the, a page number. I don't think it's necessary. If you have it, it's not wrong, but it's not necessary. So check all citations. Make sure they're paraphrased. No quotation marks. Make sure that the citations themselves contain only the author's last name. I saw some examples with the author's last name, comma, the first initial, kind of like what we do with the references, but that's only for the references. Citations include only the last name. Just like this example, Manu, comma, Douglas, comma, and Ayanor comma, and then the year. Notice we have a serial comma. <laughs> now, if we have three authors, three or more authors in our citation, what should we include? This is a change in the seventh edition. It used to be different in the sixth edition. I thought it was after three. Yeah, it's actually three or more. That's a change, right? <laughs> So if you guys have authors, check your, your partners, the number of authors in each citation. Three or more, you can use at all, E-T-A-L, at all. So include the first, the first uh, author. In fact, um, Adan, if you want to change that just so we can see an example. Manu, comma, at all, period, comma, space, 2020. That just means the first author and then everyone else. Three or more authors, you can use it at all. Take a look at your partner's work. This is a very simple thing to find. Just glance down at each of the citations. 
Make sure they're at the end of the sentence. Make sure that you have et al for three or more authors. Of course, in the references, we'll list all the authors. I think there are certain rules. I guess if you have 20 or more, if anybody has a reference, 20 or more authors, there are rules for that one. Well, let me know. I'm going to assume that we don't have any uh, any uh, sources that with that many authors. Do we talk about indentation? Make sure that your partner has an half an inch indentation for each of the five paragraphs. Make sure there's a half an inch indentation for each of the five paragraphs. Take a look at each paragraph and simply count the number of sentences. How many sentences in the first paragraph, the second, third, fourth, and fifth paragraph? How many sentences in each paragraph? Make sure they have at least five sentences. There should be between five to eight sentences in each of the five paragraphs. The only punctuation mark we should see that will conclude a sentence is the period. Okay, so we're not going to be using question marks or exclamation marks, which are other ways that we can complete a sentence. This, the, the period will be the only punctuation mark to conclude a sentence. Check your partner's work. I think I stopped leaving a list. The good thing is we're recording this, so I may go back and find the timestamps for each one of these points. How are we doing, guys? Questions so far? Are we okay? A lot of details. A partner of mine um, has like, I don't know. A weird part at the end, but I don't know uh, how to fix it, and I don't know if she can fix it. And can you describe the situation? Yeah. At the end, the words just don't come at the end. They just, um, they just um, work, break one part, and they... And the references, or in the... Yeah. So the word should continue, but ah. they don't. Okay, so when you get if if you guys take a look at your references, and if you use the slider bars correctly, and still the text doesn't quite line up, then then the problem is the spacing between the the words. Sometimes we try to create we force an indentation by just hitting the space bar. And so if you remove all the extra space, we should have just one space between words like normal, then that will fix that will fix the reference. Let me see if I can show you what I mean in uh, this in this document. So I'm just going to select this first one. Well, I'll just do this. It might look like something like, like this. And sometimes, well, it's not doing it now, but sometimes the spacing will, will, it just won't line up. It's actually not doing it now, but uh, usually that's the problem. The problem is you have too much space between words. So as long as you, like that, it might look something like that, or, you know. So it's all, almost always a problem with the spacing. And if you just remove any extra space between words, then most of the time that will take care of the, the problem. So that's why I would suggest using the space bars up at the top in the ruler instead of just trying to force 
The indentation. All right, any other questions so far? Yes. For example, I need a secondary source, and what I did where I will I use it up because they have to log out first, but I don't know if you can check it. I need it. Well, I uh, okay. It. Can I open it up here? Okay. So let's look at uh, Susie's example here of this is called a secondary citation. That's a citation within a citation. So let's take a look. At that. Okay, yeah, give it a second here. Yeah. Takes a, takes a while. This one here? Uh, yes. Um uh, this one here? All right, so let's take a look at this one. We have the example of an indirect citation here. So I want to check the references. Wow, this is moving a little slow. Okay, this is our example here. This is an example of a secondary citation, a citation within a citation. So what we need to include in the references is source only. We do not include NARI. Okay, so that's my first observation. Make sure if any of the secondary citations you only include in the references the as cited in reference, right? So it's this one. Now, in this case, you have one, two, three, four, whatever. So you got a lot. Yeah, so that's fine. So she's using at all. Now, the only thing I don't know about this, I would have to look at the source because we're not, I don't have it here. But if it, if it, if there are three or more, then that's fine at all. So, Neri at all, comma, 2014, comma, as cited in, that's correct. That's, that's how you can do that. You could also say, according to Neri, even though we usually don't focus on narrative citations, it's, it's acceptable to say, according to Neri at all, 2014, blah, 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 blah. And then a citation at the end as cited in source. But yes, what you have here, that, that's actually how I would do it. Uh, for example, about punctuation, here is it out the period, comma, or just period? I'm pretty sure it's a period. Let me double check. Let me double check. Yes. Because I have Almost. an example. Uh, in my last essay from the last semester, and I just put like in our photo and then space and the period. I'm pretty sure what I'm not sure about is the period. Um, I know we need a comma. Okay. All right, but let me double check. I'm pretty sure though it's a period because it's an abbreviation. And then a comma. So yeah. So it's at all period after all, comma, space, and then the year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, questions, guys, anything else? Or anyone want me to look at your text? We still have a few more minutes here. Or anything that we've talked about that needs repeating, that is still unclear. Thank you. Okay, sure. You're welcome. Anybody online? You guys are quiet today. Any observations, questions?
Ah, uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Take a look at linking verbs and the topic sentences. I would avoid phrases like, um, like this is another, this is one of the, I would try to avoid those, those types. Think of the topic sentence is a special sentence because I think it should, should start with a subject, a dynamic verb, instead of saying, well, there's one other thing, this, there's another thing and another thing. Just tell us what the thing is, right? Tell us what the subject is, give us a good verb, give us a good predicate, and that's gonna start each sentence really well for that main idea, making sure you have enough information uh, that's specific to that paragraph. Okay. Like in, in this game, in this example, peer influence, that's a keyword, right? So we want that one. Uh, we want motive. We want uh, young adults and address. Those are all keywords. So something like um, young adults. Let's see, here use another motive. All right. Young adults influence each other. Right. Um, through through the consumption of candles. Right now, maybe we add a little bit more, but but you see how I changed the wording around just a little bit. And I use the verb influence. Instead, and I know you have peer influence as a, as a noun, but but you could say they influence each other without using the phrase peer influence. I'm trying to find a word. A lot of times, if you can change a noun to a verb, you're you're better off. Almost in every case. Look for those key nouns. Like for example, consumption. Maybe we can change that to consume. Young adults consume cannabis because of peer influence or peer pressure. So again, I change the, the noun consumption to the verb consume. Now you've got a good verb. Consume is great. Influence is great. Because those are more dynamic verbs instead of, let's say, maybe like linking verbs. Right? Um, and, this, and this is for, for, for everyone. Just take a look at those key words challenge that could be a verb right just take a look at any of the key words and ask yourself is there a way that i could reword this dependence it de they depend maybe or a generate could be a verb treat could be a verb again and i'm just throwing out options you have to look at the whole sentence and see which verbs might work but notice almost in every sentence we can find some nouns that we can convert to the verb and, and then look at it and say, okay, how can I reword it so that I, I've got the good verbs? It's like you're looking for the verbs first and then constructing a sentence around the verb, right? That's another technique that you can use to really, if you're not sure, well, how do I say the same thing without using a linking verb to be or to become? Well, this is what I, I would try to do is really dig deep into those. Be careful. Oh, this is one thing too. And I, I wanted to share with this. I'll share with you guys now. Um, see if I can find it. I came across a, a summary. Yeah, I like this. You guys should uh, take a look at this list. You know, I'm always suggesting try to avoid the word very. Take a look at this list and you'll see why. Notice here is a list of phrases with the word very, very accurate, very aggressive, very amazed, very angry, very anxious. And look at all the other possible words that you might use instead for each one. So if you have, I don't know, an example of very clear, Maybe you use the word instead transparent, translucent, glossy, crystal. Now, some of these words might work better than others, depending on your, your text. But the point here is we want to avoid the word very because most of the time there is another word that will work even better. And 
you'll have a better, a kind of a more descriptive word of what it is you want to talk about. Now, I still will say, you know, live, if you have examples of very important, I still think we should avoid the word important. So in that case, let me find an example here. Where is it? I, like this. In this case, you're not going to want to use crucial or vital or essential because we don't even want to use the word important, typically. OK. Um, but you know, almost in every other case, we can find some really good examples of some synonyms for these words that we're using uh, very. So uh, this might be a list that you might find useful. There are many lists, of course, online, but this is an example of what, 220 <laughs> different verbs. So this will, I think, be a good uh, starting point. Okay, those of you online, how are we doing, guys? Questions, comments? No, I think you're, thank you. I know this was, this session was a little tedious, but I think sometimes it takes us to go through this. And, you know, this session has been recorded, so, you know, take the time. If you need to go back to the recording, check with your partners. Clarify your doubts, check each one of these points, and it does get easier, right? If this, if this is all new, this first few times, it, it can be tedious. But you will pick it up. It does get easier. The more times you, you write these essays and you are paying attention to the things we've looked at here today, you don't have to, you won't think about it. You will either avoid it right away when you're writing, or you'll easily check it when you're self-correcting yourself when you are looking at your work, revising it and uh, making those changes. We haven't talked about anything related to content. OK, maybe tomorrow we'll spend a little time on the meal plan. But please, I want these sessions this week, our live sessions, our in-class sessions to be as informative as possible. So bring your questions. If you want to send me questions beforehand, if you want to ask in class, but try to think up of some think of some questions that that come up, some things you're struggling with, so that I can address some of these things that are most relevant to your writing experience. Right? Ideal, ideally, that's that's the idea that you are, you know, getting the most out of these sessions. So help me help you by sending me your questions and giving me some things that I can try to do to help clarify some of these. And if I need to talk again about something I've already talked about, of course, we can, I'll do that. Whatever we need to do until we, we, we get your doubts uh, clarified, that's what, we'll, that's what we do. So, my friends, we still got a, a few more minutes. Any observations, comments? Concerns? I don't know. Uh, I've seen that, that some people may have a because of and because in the system. I know that they mean the same, the same, the, the, the grammar and the sentence change, what will change. Um, is that okay if we use because of? Yeah, because and because of. Uh, there. So because is, is a subordinating. Uh, conjunction because of is also a subordinating conjunction. It's it's a but it's it's a phrase. It's more than one words, but it's actually functioning similarly. So because of this, um, they're both accepted. Either way is fine. Some of you are using since. Uh, that's not my word of my preference, but. It will it will work also. You can use since instead of because. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. You can use as. Yeah.
All right, guys. Well, if there are no more questions, just got a couple more minutes. We'll go ahead and close for today. And uh, tomorrow we'll have class. We'll, this will be pretty much our, our process this week in class on Wednesday. Uh, we will continue. Um, I will take your questions. If you guys want me to look at something specific in your text, leave you feedback within your text. Again, please, today, tomorrow, and on Wednesday, ideally, will be the best days for you to request feedback uh, so that we don't push up all of your requests at the very, very last minute, uh, a day or two before the, the due date. So again, uh, continuing, continue to make changes to your document. It's really best, I think, to try to spend a little bit of time each day in this so that um, it, I think it's just easier to get started up Again, looking at your text and revising it. Make sure that you have good topic sentences, the meal plan, you have enough sentences in each paragraph, APA, and so on. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. And uh, we'll see everybody on, uh, on Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, teacher. Have a nice day. Thank you, teacher. Bye, guys. Yeah, I'm going to get